Hey, CarMax one-on-one -on -one as we get set for the opener between the Celtics and the Cavaliers. Look at that. Cleveland winning their series against Orlando with a negative point differential. Only wow. uh, less than 10% of teams are able to pull that off, but they did. Uh, Boston dispatching of Miami in five in the first round, and you see the big advantages they had in that series. Um, and again, when you look at the numbers there, Cleveland-wise, that's uh, they got a they got a tough chore against the Boston Celtics. Uh, Cleveland's round one victory over the Magic was their first in a best of seven without LeBron James since they beat the Celtics in the Eastern Conference semis back in 1992. Those were the Brad Doherty, Mark Price, Larry Nance, <laughs> Hot Rod Williams Cavs. Now, as Donovan Mitchell led Cleveland goes up against number one seed Boston at the top of the hour, we check in with Stephanie Reddy. Steph. Hey there, EJ. Um, the, I want to give you a quick update. Jared Allen, everyone's wondering if he'll be back in action tonight because he was listed as questionable as soon as today, actually, for the Cavs. He is not. He is now out officially for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Remember, it was a right rib contusion was the injury. He missed the last three games of the last series. He is with the team, so that's good news. He's traveling and participating. He was at shoot-around this morning. The bad news, though, is his range of motion in terms of lifting his arms up above his head he struggles to do that even struggling to sleep at night so in terms of when they think he'll be back they're hopeful but there is no immediate timeline for the return of Jared Allen now in his absence obviously all eyes will be on Donovan Mitchell to really pick up in terms of uh, scoring for them He's done a great job of that so far. I talked to him this morning, Donovan Mitchell, about his expectations and seeing lots of different defenses tonight with the Celtics. He said, you know, I know they have a lot of different things they can throw at me, and I'm prepared for all of them. He knows that it's up to him to find his spots, to take advantage of what the defense gives him, no matter what the matchups are, no matter what the schematics are that he's facing. And I talked to an executive that worked with him in years past, and he said Donovan Mitchell is one of the most prepared NBA players that he's ever seen. It's not just in terms of his individual preparedness to play in the game but also his film work his weightlifting everything he does is geared toward being ready for these types of environments and guys now he's got more playoff experience he's ready for tonight Stephanie ready thank you very much we appreciate the info and uh, we look ahead to game one of that series look um Cavs have had a way of playing Boston pretty tough they've won four of the last seven over Boston three of those were in overtime um, but Talk me into thinking that uh, that this is going to be a series. I really want to believe that, but uh, just looking at these teams and no Jared Allen, I have I'm, I'm struggling that way a little bit, Shaq. Yeah, we're all struggling. Garland's going to have to play well and be consistent, and Donovan Mitchell is going to have to play out of his mind. Those last two games in Orlando, 44.5, that's the Donovan Mitchell I would like to see. Uh, you know, he just has to go out and believe that he is the best player on the floor. I don't know how these guys motivate themselves, but when I was playing, I always had to have that extra motivation. And right now, he's not the best player on the floor, but he has the ability to be the best player on the floor. So he's going to have to play out of, the, out of this world. I don't know if he can average 44 against Boston, but if he can give me 35, 36, 37 and average that, they definitely have a shot. Well, I mean, he's a, he's a dynamic scorer. Uh, he, can, he can put his, the, the team on his back in key moments on the offensive end. Uh, but the key for, for Cleveland is defensively. And with Jared Allen, we talked about a guy like Rudy Gobert who can make you second-guess yourself driving quickly to the lane. Uh, he could do that. The one thing about Jared Allen, what makes even with Rudy as well, what makes him special, they don't shoot the three, but they can guard the three. And if you can guard the three, you can play in the NBA. You can play at a high level. Because, you know, you, you, you do that. And so if a guy like Porzingis is in the game who's seven feet, he can guard the three or he can guard him. So I'm just interested to see what happens with Jared Allen and how long he comes back. That can dictate how long the series lasts. Yeah, because rebounding is going to be a huge factor in this. And they got out-rebounded by Orlando and Boston crushed Miami on the glass. So yeah. we'll, we'll see on that. Well, I, I think that Porzingis, I don't think they can win a championship without Porzingis. That's first and foremost. I, they, I think they can win this series. I think Jalen and Jason going to have a huge advantage, huge advantage, because there's nobody on the Cavs can guard them, zero. I mean, uh, whether <sighs> who's healthy or who's not healthy. Uh, but to me, it's going to come down to Struess 
if the Cavs have a chance, Struz is going to have to play great. Uh, Garland, Lavert, Lavert, all those guys going to play well. But the Celtics, man, they're just loaded. Uh, I think the Cavs do get a break having no Porzingis. Uh, but that guy right there, he, he is special. Jalen Brown is special. Uh, Derek White, is uh, to say he's on a heater would be an <laughs> understatement. That would be a disgrace to, he to heaters. So, <laughs> he's, and I think he's probably going to get the first. I, I, I'm curious who they're going to get the first crack at Donovan, whether it's going to be Derek or Drew. Because Drew's one of the best defendants in the NBA. Both pretty good options right there. there. There's That's two pretty good sure. options. Yeah. I think I would start with Drew because I think I would never want He's averaging right. 30 versus Celtics. Yeah. I, I, just would never, I just would He's never want 30. Well, he was averaging 40. If they hold him to 30, the Cavs ain't got no chance. Yeah. I, I just want, I wouldn't want his offense to suffer at this point where Drew, his value is his defense. So I'm going to put the Point. best defender on on Donovan Mitchell for the rest for the whole game. Yeah, but the one thing you don't want for Drew, you want him to get in foul trouble because that was. Oh, then I switch. Uh, they yeah, switch but, you, but, you, but if he's in foul trouble, they still won't have a point guard when it really matters. I just think if the Celtics come out, I would try to send them a message personally, uh, you know, because they the la they only beat them one time this year, and that's when they were down 20 in the fourth quarter and the Celtics foot their foot took their foot off the pedal. I would like, uh, you know, the, the, obviously the Celtics are heavy favorite. I would try to send them a message. This is not the magic. We want y'all to know this is what it's going to be like for the rest of the series. We're going to punch y'all in the mouth, get off. Because at some point, the Celtics got to address, they got to address this 500 record at home. Yeah, 14 and 14 over the last four postseasons. To your point, though, on, on getting out and establishing yourself, their first half lead, they've led at the half of every game against Miami by an average of 16 points a game. So, Good starts have been uh, have been a strong suit for them, and we really haven't seen Jason Tatum at his best in that series. He's their third leading scorer in that series, uh, playing in his by the way his 100th postseason game tonight is Jason Tatum. But in fairness, he didn't have to, Ernie. Yeah, I know Jalen, and it was very close. Jalen yeah. Brown, then yeah. Derek White, then Jason Tatum, yeah. and we'll see what. Uh, what he does in this series against Cleveland. <laughs> uh, that was <laughs> Six to four hours in darkness? Yeah. There you go. Charles trying to eat at the darkness retreat. That would be the picture of frustration, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why it would be dark. I could be alone. Why would it be dark in the <laughs> I don't understand that part.